Hello everyone, Leah here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to approach any flower with an abstract eye. So what I'm going to do is walk you through my steps. I'm going to randomly select a flower out of my flower color guide book, and then I'm going to take you through the steps that I take to examine the flower and then recreate it. If you're new to creating abstract flowers, I think this would be a great video for you to get started and as well as if you aren't new to abstract, but you're finding that several of your flowers are starting to look similar to one another. Um, I know I went through that when I was first approaching doing abstract flowers and being more expressive with it. I found that no matter what color I was using, they still kind of turned out and looked the same. Um, so I think this will be great for anyone that's really looking to take their abstract floral paintings a little further. So let's just dive right in to picking a flower. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip the pages, close my eyes, and then wherever I stop. Hopefully I don't stop somewhere where I've already, you know, bent the book a little, but <laughs> here I go. Okay, clearing my mind, eyes are closed. I think this is gonna be a great one right here. First flower. The Gerbera daisy? Oh. So the first thing that I do when I'm trying to learn a new flower and their shape is grab a sketchbook. I'm just gonna put it this way. And a pen. So you can use a ballpoint pen, pencil, um, anything that you want. I mean, grab a colored pencil, grab a marker, grab a crayon. I mean, like, do grab whatever you want. I think I'm gonna use my ink pen for this. I prefer going the route where it's something that I can't go back and erase. I really found that when I examine doing abstract shapes and things like that. Using something more permanent like ink really helped me realize what I was doing. So the first thing that I'm gonna do before I even start with pen to paper is take a look at the characteristics of the flower. What makes this unique and different? So what I like about this flower and what initially drew me to this side of the page is just how wild and crazy these petals are. The fact that they bend and are not uniform to how they stick out. They're kind of a little, you know, frazzle dazzled in a way. So I really like that. I'm also gonna take a quick look at where the center of the flower is, how it looks when it's on an angle. This one doesn't have any uh, greenery, so no foliage to go with it, no leaves or anything. So we don't have that to examine for shapes, but the petals themselves are pointed and long. Also, something that I like to do when I'm doing this approach, kind of like I do when I am doing my paintings, is that I hold my pen a little bit differently. Not like I would write or do like more fine detail drawing. I kind of hold it in the wrong spot. I hold it up higher and a little bit more loose. And I keep my eye mostly on this page where my flowers are to just trace the shape and the petals of it. It's basically blind drawing, only I will go back and forth between the two. So I'm gonna start with this flower here. Except it's kind of awkward with me trying to keep this in frame and I'm a righty, so it blocks it. You know what, I'm sorry guys, I have to move this. You can't see the little one in frame anymore, so I'm gonna switch up to this one. Hello everyone, future Leah here, just popping in to let you know that I will be 
frequently popping back in with um, added uh, thoughts and tips just because when I was drawing this, I kept getting really into it. The center of the flower is more open. Which resulted in me forgetting to share what I was thinking out loud. And then I'm just going to start following some of these lines. And yeah, I just wanted to share with you guys just my thoughts behind it, like how when you're creating your abstract flowers and doing this step, if you would like to follow along with my approach to learning different shapes of flowers, you have a couple of ways to do this. So you can do the lines like I am right now, where I'm following every petal and taking a look at different petal shapes as I draw them in there. Or you can go more vague and more broad with the just general outside shape so as you can see there are gaps right so you could do a rounder circle with small spikes around and bigger gaps and flowing lines versus going the pedal route like I did and while I'm doing this I'm also just letting myself feel this chaos so even though the lines the petals themselves don't come to a fine tip in the center you can see that like a normal petal they you know shape like this go pointed and then centered but I'm just letting myself be loose with it like I'm coming back to the same spot for multiple shapes and sizes I really enjoyed that approach when I went and created this flower as a drawing. Um, it just helped with the overall imperfections of that flower. And you know, when I say the word chaos of it, you know, how it's all pointed and twisty and imperfect, that's what I mean. And it's a beautiful chaos. It's not a negative chaos. So let's not put a negative like a negativity towards that word when I use it to describe this flower it is it is the beauty behind the imperfection because it's imperfect because it's different it is beautiful and I think sometimes chaos can be beautiful especially when it comes to nature and art and expression so that's what I mean <laughs> Also, does anyone actually know how to pronounce this flower name properly? Because I know I don't say things right and I'm sure I'm reading it wrong, but Gerbera, is, like, is that right? Is it wrong? Please help me in the comment section below because I have no idea. Now that I've got the chaos that I feel like it represents the shaping of it, I'm going to now focus on the center and I'm not gonna be precise. So you can see that there's a little round shapage in the center. And yes, I know these aren't technical terms, but I feel like when you're approaching something with an abstract eye, you don't need to use technical terminology about parts of your flowers because you want to put a uh, shape to what you're seeing. So these look like little bally shapes. So by naming a part of a flower by the shape that your brain recognizes, it helps you to put that thought to paper. So those little specks in the center, I see them as little bally textures. By using the word bally, I'm able to you know, visualize and put on paper. And they appear to get even smaller as they go to the center. If, for example, you saw these petals more as like needle points or spikes or something like that, that would help you create a visual in your mind to help you move your hand to create those shapes. That gives you that, that abstract personal touch. That's all you. Remember, this stage isn't about perfection. Abstract flowers is all about expression, being loose, and just 
having fun with it, being yourself as well. Because we all hold our brushes differently, we all create in our own way, and we all see things differently, right? So just remember that. Another thing that you can do to create your florals in an abstract way is to use the opposite color or a completely different color or a color that is calling to you. So even though these flowers are red, I'm gonna be doing them in purple. I also want you guys to know that the shapes that I will most likely be using are gonna be my rounds and my flats. So if you'd like to follow along with the same shapes, you can. Alrighty, so the first thing I wanna do is actually just Where's my center? What direction is my flower going in? And I think I'm going to do it this way. So this will be the top end. Pre-drawing the center of a flower like this one, that's a petal-based um, flower, especially when it's new to you and you're just getting acquainted with it, can really help with knowing what direction your petals are gonna go in versus always having them you know dead center and always expanding out or if you're going to have petals that are more towards the viewer you know kind of thing when i approached the painting instead of being identical to how i drew it i decided to use a slightly larger paintbrush than maybe i would have done if i want to be more close to reality um, and add more of that beautiful chaos by having so many um, petals. Instead, to be more abstract with it as an acrylic approach to using acrylic painting and making these flowers, I'm using a larger paintbrush for a smaller formed flower. This can help add to that boldness, that abstract, that impressionistic look that you might be going for. If you are using paintbrushes that are too big or too small kind of thing. I always like to mix my colors up and be a little bit more like layering. So even though I have purple there, I might go back and do this. It's all about what you prefer. And remember, when you're first learning a new flower and looking at it differently to create, it's okay to do a first draft, a second draft, a uh, tenth draft before you get to the way you enjoy creating that flower that you feel represents what it looks like and how it makes you feel. Now that I've got these two base areas, I'm just going to have fun, add some highlights where I think I feel they need to be. So you can see this photograph. We have highlights like where it looks a little bit brighter and lighter here and then there's shadow underneath but we don't need to be so um, focused on realism for the real shadow and things. We can just put our own impressions of it. So, so far what I've done is only use white and my ultramarine violet. I'll admit that at this stage, I don't think when I was originally painting the flower that I went as crazy as I could have and had as much freedom and movement as I should have. You know, like when I'm making these petals and I'm looking back at watching this, I feel like I should have had more flowers bending, flowing, overlapping. And I think that's what's great about when you look back at something. So even though um, I, I, this is my first time ever creating this flower, like there, you, you saw me, I flipped through it. It was my first approach to ever making this flower. So it's okay to look back at something, see it and go, hmm, I think I would have done this differently. Also, um, remember to hold your paintbrush in a loose manner. Try not to be super tight with it. It's all about what feels comfortable for you, but I find in my experience to have abstract, loose flowers, they need to be held lightly. So I prefer to hold it more on the tip end. It's not common for artists to show the beginning stages of learning a new skill or trait. It's usually shared after they've mastered it or they feel more comfortable with it. And so they can you know, show others and teach others. But I think this type of tutorial that I'm doing and the ones that are to come to follow 
are going to be really helpful for you guys to just see that you can approach things and see things and this is how I do it and it won't always be perfect but that's okay. Because what I really like about this daisy is the fact that there are so many petals so you can have a lot of fun with layering and adding in that kind of chaos to this flower. All right I'm really liking how these layers look. So I'm going to now do focus on the center of the flower and for that I'm going to use a flat brush. Bam. I mean it doesn't need to be perfect right you just want to put a shape there. And because this flower has a dark center I'm now going to put black there because it's black. I mean you don't have to. My fur baby always has to have a cameo in my videos. Like if he's not in the room with me making noises in the background, he's somewhere barking and it's adorable. And I hope nobody finds it annoying, but it's life, you know, that's life. Now I'm going to dot it. As future Leah, I'm going to share a thought with you I had after I completed this flower, took a step back and went back to look at the photo. And that is... Even though I was doing an impressionistic, you know, approach to this flower with an abstract eye, the dots that those Bali bits that I did in the drawing, it felt right doing it in my drawing. But when I went and did it in the painting afterwards, it just didn't feel right. It felt like too much for me. So another way that you can approach doing something like that is honestly just simple strokes to imply that there's a lighter and a darker spot there versus going in with so much textural detailing like I am right now. Now typically between doing thick layers like I just did for the dotting, you'd want to wait in between because it takes time to dry. But for the sake of the video, I didn't. Now I'm just going to show you how I then lighten this up. Something that I actually really love about acrylic paint and that's really drawing me to it right now is the fact that when I want to put in a highlight after going over something really dark, um, I can do that where you know with watercolors and certain other materials you can't do light on dark you have to do dark to light and when you're doing abstract impressionistic florals it can be really fun layering light to dark light to dark light to dark all right guys, we've reached the end of the demonstration for today. I really hope that you learned a new approach or were able to see um, a different way that you too can incorporate the steps I take to creating abstract flowers into your own practices. <laughs> Sorry, every time I open my mouth to speak, he starts barking. And this is like my 17th take. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm just gonna keep going and see how this, see how this goes. Um, <laughs> anyways, where was I? Right, um, so again, I just wanna say thank you for watching this video. And yes, I do hope that the way I do things can help you approach new flowers in a creative way as well. I do plan on doing more videos like this. So if you have any suggestions for floral types or anything like that, that you want to see or learn how to approach, let me know in the comment section below. If it doesn't matter to you to which one it is, um, you can also say that as well, because either way I might take um, my next painting and just flip through here and pick one at random again. Um, also, I just want to let you guys know that if you'd like to see this flower in action for this painting right here, because after I did my initial examination of this flower and expression, I went and took some time during my healing with art time for myself and put on some music, danced around and let loose and just created something. I haven't included the time lapse of this in this video just because I didn't want uh, this demonstration to be so long. Um, so I've split it into two videos today and I've created this into being a relaxing time-lapse video with some good music that you can listen to and just kind of breathe and watch if you'd like. 
Now, before I sign off, let's do our breathing exercises to bring in positivity and push out any negativity that we may be holding on to. So let's take a deep breath in. And release that air. Let's push out any negativity that we may have been holding on to. Let's take another one in. And if you have an affirmation for today, let's recite it in our minds as we breathe in. And push out that negativity. Let's just shake out our limbs. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you are new to my channel and you found this video and you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. If you are interested in creating abstract impressionistic artwork and using art as a tool towards healing, that's what I'll do here. Um, and yeah, that's all I've, that's for, that's it for today. <laughs> and I will see you guys again next week. Until next time, stay magical.